Okay, Roddy, the, in, um, we talked in part one, I mean, your day, by the sound of it, most days, is pretty full anyway. You do put the hours in, so you still ride out for, I know, at least, at least one uh, trainer, Nigel Hawk. Why do you still ride out? Um, just because I love horses. Um, I love just going and um, still ride out and just, I don't school and I just ride out and it's just nice to get on horses, be around them. It's just a part of my life, the part of why, why I wanted to become a jockey and it's something, there's, I go racing, you're seeing horses all the time, so they're, yeah, they're a big part of it. And uh, you also ride a bicycle, do you, do you still ride to Nigel's? I used to do that a lot when I used to, yeah, when I, when I was, before the coaching really took off, I used to go in there and we'd, I spent a lot of time riding out there, but um, and I'd cycle over there, it's a bit mad really, but um, yeah, it's, um, I don't cycle there anymore, no I don't, but I still ride the bike a lot. It must be quite uphill there from, uh, from here, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah, the, the, the ride home is easy, um, but the, the cycle there is quite hard, yeah, it is quite a, it's a lot of uphill, yeah. And I was uh, doing a bit of uh, Google stalk interview yesterday, doing my research, and I, See, you've done some, um, you've raised quite a bit of money as well. Doing, you've ridden from John O'Groats to Land's End in I'm told near record time. I wouldn't say a record time. I did it in just, just, just around, around four days. Um, and I had uh, Lucy Charnock, Fringer Jockey. She, she drove in a, uh, a Jonathan Lower, let us, um, who has got a, who used to be a jockey, obviously, for Martin Pipe back in the day. He's got a, um, a camper van business over at Thorn Falcon. And so we, we borrowed one of these camper vans and she kind of drove along. So she'd go off to, for 100 miles ahead of me and I, I'd, I'd cycle and we'd have lunch and we'd go, I'd go again basically, you know. So it was, yeah, it was, uh, we raised money. We raised about five, six grand as I remember um, for the new jockeys and for cancer research and various things. So it was good. But it was, it was a landmark thing for me. It was, it's the thing you do once in your life, do you know what I mean? Yeah, do you just do it on your own, did you? You know, no other side Yeah, no, no one else is that crazy to do, <laughs> to do that, do you know what I mean? So yeah, I did it on my own. So how do, you, how do you keep yourself motivated in that? You've got music on or something, or just no? I just keep going. <laughs> I like cycling. Um, and you and you rode from Trafalgar Square to home non-stop. Yeah, we did. I forgot about that. We did that a few years ago. It was nothing special, to be fair. It's not that far. I did Ireland last year. We, we, me and my my son, we did. Um, I cycled from the bottom of uh, Ireland to the top of Ireland, which is Malinhead to Mizzenhead. Um, we did that in four days but that was a bit more social um my brother was there as well so yeah it's just i like cycling so it's it's good it's, it just keeps me fit that's you, but your, your backside must be cast iron from your jockey days is that yeah, it probably is it? yeah probably is <laughs> now talking about your jockey days you're a very successful jockey um you were born in uh, well you're irish born in ireland were you, were you from a racing background yeah my dad was a racehorse trainer and a vet um he was he was you know very eminent vet in ireland he was very um he did a lot of work with greyhounds and, and obviously racehorses and he trained for a number of years, trained quite a few winners and that and he, um, yeah, he was, uh, yeah, he was good at it. And so you were from an early age on the back of a horse? Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah, I was just pony club stuff and everything and um, I left, I kind of like ran away from home when I was about uh, 17, 16 and a half, 17, came over here. Um, and uh, yeah, I worked for a lady in um, Hampshire, uh, Lindsay Bauer, not for a lot, very long, and then ended up with Oliver Carter for a while, yeah, point to pointing when I was just 17 and a half, 18. I want to talk about Oliver Carter because I, I remember him from a different, <laughs> different side of the fence. We used to, the, the point to point at Ottery St. Mary on his land was right, always yeah. quite um, yeah. entertaining, especially when he got on the. Uh, when he got on the PA system yeah. and started yeah. telling they, the they bookies. They still have the point to point there. They still yeah. have it there, yeah. Now, he was a, let's say, a character. Yeah, he was, yeah. Um, can you tell us a few Oliver Carter stories? Oh, you could tell, I could talk all day about him. But um, he, was, he was definitely eccentric. And there was one day, there was a horse there called Glazepta again, who actually ran in the champion hurdle um, back in the early 80s for John Frankham actually wrote it. I remember the story. And he was still there when I was there. And... Um, Oliver decided he, he one day he was going to sort his back out. So he made me bring the horse into these, in these indoor stables he had. And he got up on the, on the rafters of the, um, of the stables and I, he made me hold the horse while he jumped on the horse's back. And he said that was his way of sorting his back because he'd seen some back person, some crack doctor do it years before or something. And he thought he'd try and do it. And there's, I'm trying to hold the horse while he's jumping off the rafters. Like, you wouldn't believe it. You know, it's crazy. I'm thinking, what is going on here? <laughs> did you, did, I mean, did you sort of wonder what the hell you come to when you sort of went down there? Well, I, I'd heard he was a bit eccentric, but I was a kid who was just desperate to get on. So I, and I knew he was, 
he could train and he trained a whip bread winner at Otter Way yeah. years before. So I knew he could do it and I was just desperate for work and I wanted to get on. So it was a no-brainer for me. And you rode point to points for him? Yeah, yeah, I did. I rode a few winners from point to points. Um, I rode, I think I rode four winners my first season. And yeah, it was great. I just, it was a case of getting to know people down in the West Country. I knew a lady called Patsy Osborne back in those days as well, and she helped me a lot. Um, God bless her. She was, a, she was very, very good to me. And then I sort of got in with a lot of people. Um, I got in with people called the Bloomfields down in Launceston and Cornwall, and they were, they were quite, um, he was quite a, he was a sheep farmer, but he had quite a lot of racehorses. And he gave me my first winner on the rules, a horse called Midnight Madness at Exeter. Um, so that was, it was, a, it was a good grounding to get into, to get to know people pointing as well pointing to me was really good for me so did you leave Oliver on good terms did you just move on well he didn't want me to go he, he asked he offered me he wanted me to stay for the next season I said look and I remember Kevin Bishop I, I wanted to go to Kevin Bishop because he was an up-and-coming trainer at the time in Bridgewater and uh, I told Oliver I was leaving he was a bit disappointed but you know I he was a great guy and it was um it was a good experience but that way <laughs> so when you, where did you go next went to Kevin Bishop's after that and, and sadly for Kevin, he had a bad year that year and I went to him. Um, I must be a jinx or something because he, he got the virus that year. And then I ended up the next season, went to Richard Lee's. And Richard Lee was like, he was, he was on the crest of the wave at the time. The, the years of Swardeen, Delius, uh, Miss Nero, um, Space Fair, good horses he had. And I was there working for him. And I, rode, I, rode my, I think I rode 15 winners my first season for him. So it was a good start. Um, and then ended up at David Barnes's after that. Did that make you realise even more how, how um, unorthodox yeah, Oliver, <laughs> Oliver was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I kept in touch with Oliver over the years and um, yeah, I had the odd ride for him as well. So he was, a, he was a good old boy. And then you went, was it Paul Nichols and Paul Barber? Yeah, well, I went, that was, um, when I went to Barron's, David retired not, not long afterwards. I went there. We won the national, um, obviously Nigel won the national in Seagram. Um, and I'd ridden Seagram and I'd ridden good horses there, but things hadn't, weren't going well there. And he sort of retired. So I ended up going to um, Paul and branched, Paul Nichols, who was his previous stable jockey, branched out on his own. I joined him a year after he started training and I did a whole, I did a calendar year with Paul. I think it was, the, uh, I think it could have been 92, 92 or 93, I quite, can't quite remember. So I did from Christmas to Christmas. I think I rode him about, I think, 12 winners just for him in that year, as well as the other people. So then I moved on to um, David's wife. She started training. Which I joined her after that. Um, so, yeah, so it was, uh, yeah, it was, they were, you know, they were interesting early years. And when you're working at these yards, are you sort of having to work in the yards or are you just purely a, a jockey? No, no, I was always working in the yard, yeah. You know, because to be fair, you know, you're, you're still, I was still claiming. So you're still learning your trade. So you're, you, you, and that's, you, you had a job as well and you had a purpose. You're up every morning mucking out, um, riding out four or five lots or whatever and uh, doing what you have to do, go racing, whatever. And then you moved to Martin Pipe, which probably most well, that, people... That was a long time. Was, was, there, was, there, was there was a stuff going on between all that, injuries and stuff like that. But I ended up at Martin Pipe um, by mistake, really, because I was, I was going through a bad patch at the time and... Um, as I say, different things had happened, and I was, I ended up, I, by chance, got a job at Pipes. Um, Jerry Supple, actually, funny enough, sort of put me in for the for the job, and uh, they were looking for staff at the time. So I just fell in, fell in with a bit of luck, really. And Martin said to me, "You're not going to get any rides out of us." And I says, "Fine, it's, I just needed a job." And then within a month, I'd ridden him a winner. I rode him a winner, a horse called Sprint Up as uh, as Frontwell, and never looked back up from that time. So why, why would he sort of say to you, you're not going to get any rides from him? Because he didn't mind every, every Tom, Dick and Harry going into ride for him and you know, yeah. wanting to get rides off him. He didn't need that. Yeah. You know, he was, because he, he had his own jockeys, which is fine. I just needed a job at the time. But it, um, it turned out pretty good for me. And what sort of a chap was Martin to work for? Oh, champion, yeah. I mean, I worked really hard there because I, I, I realised it was a, this was my big chance and so I was happy to work, work real hard. It was, but it was a, I, I had a wonderful career there. I, I loved it there. I thought, I, I thought actually when I went there, after a couple of years, I thought I'd be here forever because I, you know, I enjoyed it that much. There was a great um, rapport in the yard with everybody, the staff and everybody. It was brilliant. It was, it was a winning machine. Everything was winning. It was just a, it was a great time. And I just thought to myself, you'll be here forever because it was that nice to work there, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was good.
You know, when you were there, of course, AP McCoy was uh, was flying high. So yeah. was was that a bit demoralising for you, knowing that AP was going to be getting all the best horses and stuff? Or oh no, not at all. Because AP was was in my my view as as a, as the as, as the picture says over there, AP McCoy the greatest. He he was to me, um, and he was a great person to sort of you know to be like if you like number two behind. You know, to me, he was the best jockey around. So he was. He rode everything, and if there was anything left over, I'd ride whatever else. Do you know what I mean? So it was, it was good, work well. Yeah, and then with with Martin Pipe, that what what else was like the Coral Cup winner, Ulamar. Yeah, that was right. Yeah, I mean that was you know, I I to be fair, in those days, I I, I, I think I rode in every race, bar the Queen Mother and the Arkle, um, even in all those races. So you you were always going to get something, get lucky sometime with, with something. Do you know what I mean? So and Ulamar, he I think he was. We had five or six in the race, I think, and he was probably the the third string, but he, he, he bolted up, actually. And you rode over, well, if my information is correct, you rode over 100 winners for him, so... Yeah, just for him alone, yeah, it was good, yeah, it was, it was a good time there, and, um, you know, he was, he was very good. I mean, you worked hard, but you got what you deserved, and, you know, he was a good man.